Hey everybody, my name is Kip, and you're watching America Bumper to Bumper. Today we are coming to you from Mount Tabor, Vermont, and the DAF Museum. If you don't know what DAF is, keep watching. From from. And we are at the DAF Museum. So here with us is John. Yep. yep. And he's right. uh, gonna talk to us a little bit more about what DAF is, a little bit of the history, and then we're going to go and uh, take a look at uh, some of the cars they here, have here at the museum. <laughs> take it away, John. Well, um, the original DAF company was started in 1928 um, as a trailer manufacturer in, in Holland, Eindhoven, Holland. And uh, before the war, that's all they ever produced is, is trailers, 18 wheel trailers. Yeah. Um, after the war, they got into truck production and they came out with the first truck. You know, over the road truck in 1949, and uh, started playing around with the thought of maybe doing a passenger car back in the mid 50s. Huh. Okay. Um, the owner, Dr. Hub Van Dorn, which actually DAF stands for Van Dorn's Automobile Factory, um, he came up with this ingenious idea of using the CVT transmission in all of his passenger cars. Um, now, CBTs, uh, everybody velocity. knows it knows it now in yep. uh, you know cars, but uh, right. 19, what, 50? 53, 54, he first came up with the idea of, of putting it on a passenger car. Uh, it's been tried before, but never successfully, and he thought he could do it, and actually he did. 1957, they perfected the transmission, and uh, 58, 59, they started putting it in their cars. Wow, that's so awesome. It's kind of awesome. Um, car production ran from... 58 all the way to 1975. 75 is when Volvo basically took over the, the car production end of it and uh, it killed the DAF car production. Now, did they have a network of dealers in the U.S. or is all the cars that are they, here been important? They actually had a huge network of dealers and uh, uh, three distribution centers here in the States from 59 all the way to 67. Okay. Um, the federal government actually banned the cars in 1967 after they being sold here because supposedly the transmission was not safe. <laughs> and okay. now we've got it in everything. And now it's in everything, <laughs> correct. So um, the reason was that the original Variomatic, which is what the CBT was called, did not have a park setting. Oh. So the car okay. had to be started in gear, either forward or reverse. And most Americans were not used to that kind of stuff, so they ended up going through the garage doors, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it's the same old story. That's why they banned it, basically. Huh. And how many DAFs do you think are in this? Or the, the original um, import was about 1,600 from the factory. After that, uh, a lot more were imported privately yep. after the ban, obviously. Um, right now, there are roughly about 160 cars in the United States left um, some of the original ones and, and a lot of the you know self-imported ones so you know of the after 67 yep. how many of the last 10 or nine or eight whatever how many years well depending on the model um, of the original 600 DAF 600 model uh, there's roughly 14 left in the country um, of the next stage up, the Model 30, and there's roughly about 10 of those left. Wow. So, and the rest of the 31s, 32s, there's probably six or eight. Wow. So it's very few. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think I read on your the website that you you know that DAF licensed the transmissions to a lot of the snowmobile companies. Yeah, back back in the early 60s, 61, 62. Uh, Bombardier, which is, yep. you know, Skidoo, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, came over to Eindhoven and checked out the transmission, and they were awarded a franchise, provided they never put them in the cars. Yeah. So, sounds. before that, you know, snowmobiles were regular stick shift, uh, you know, gear change and things. <laughs> and then they became CVT, based on the original design of the, the DAF transmission. Now, are the new CVTs, are they still kind of a, an offshoot of that, or are they most of the new ones? They're, uh, off, kind they're of an offshoot. New... Matter of fact, the, uh, the uh, CVT was originally designed 
the newer CPTs were designed by DAF, which had a transmission division, and uh, that was taken over a couple of years ago by Bosch. Okay. So they still manufacture the belts, they still manufacture the transmissions for all the CVTs that are out there in the country now. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So DAF, although you know, I'm sure none of you have really heard about it, really has a, a real big impact in you know the cars that you know we've you know seen over you know the past 10 years. So that, that is really cool. So uh, let's go. Uh, we'll take a walk through uh, the museum, and uh, you can tell us a little bit about the cars that you got in there, and okay. uh, go from there. Sounds good. Design. Okay. Uh, this is a DAF 600 Type 1. Um, this was actually brought over from Germany by an Army serviceman. When he retired, he brought the car back with him because he loved it so much. Um, this is the only Type 1 in the United States. Wow. And I was able to find this in this condition on Long Island and purchase wow. it for the, for the museum. That's awesome. And um, what kind of engine? Uh, what how big? 600 cc um, boxer engine. Oh. Two opposing cylinders. So is it all of them two cylinders? Or they most of them are all the, the type A, which these you know, most of the majority of this is the type A, which is the original design, uh, our two cylinder air cooled. All right, cool. Um, and this this is very unique. It's a European spec car. It has the side turn signals. Oh yeah. Uh, no front signals at all and five inch headlights. Oh, little baby lights. <laughs> little baby lights, right. <laughs> and he kept it in, in basically the original spec, which I thought was great. Um, he did replace the motor at one time, um, but other than that, it's in the original state that I found it in. I'm not gonna restore this car. I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. Um, it's, it's probably, the motor's probably turned over twice already. Yeah. So. Wow. But this still is, free and still functions. That is amazing. So that's kind of a rare beast in the States. There's a few of them in Holland, uh, but not very many. She's rough. Oh. Yeah. Because of the salt. Yep. You know? And it doesn't matter whether it's, you know. Yeah, and this, this car was actually came from Connecticut. So you can imagine what it, it looked like. Yeah. It, right. Yeah. Um, this this unique little body here is a uh, a mail truck. Um, Postal Pete was originally sold to the Canadian uh, postal system. Uh, it's a Swedish design fiberglass body on a DAF frame with all DAF running gear, two cylinder motors, very matic transmission. Um, they built less than three thousand of these. This was donated to me by the, the Canadian Postal System so I could restore it. It's underway. Um, I've got most of it done already. I'm rewiring it to 12 volt. Yeah, that'll make uh, life a whole lot easier. It'll make life a <laughs> lot easier. But it's, it's original Canadian spec with the, the single wiper on top and the West Coast mirrors. Huh. It's one of three in the country. The other two are electric versions. This is it does kind of seem that it would be a you know interesting little electric thing. You got plenty of room in the back for it. Oh, exactly. Yeah, there's yeah. lots and lots of room. This uh, got you know similar 600 cc. Uh, this is actually the 850 cc. This is the big block. Uh -huh. um, it's all been restored. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's all right. It's all been restored from you know basically from the the block up. So we're working on it. Like I said, try, trying to get the the uh, twelve volt system to work properly because yep. it is a twelve volt motor. Nice. Um, next little guy is Ducky, one of my favorite ones. There's only seven of these left in the world. Uh, this is a Type 30 uh, 750cc pickup truck. Cool. 62. Uh, they basically only made about 400 of these when they came out, and like I said, there's about seven left in the world. I have two of them, <laughs> and there's four in the country. Wow. Yeah, so it, it's pretty rare. Right now, I've uh, I've had to put new clutch shoes in there, so that's why she's getting a new motor job. Uh, centrifugal clutch, two-cylinder motor, air-cooled. 
Uh, I don't know if you can. Okay. Yep. That's the clutch. Centrifugal. Mm -hmm. ah. And those eight little shoes around there. What where where's that after 60, 70,000 miles? So you got to replace them every once in a while. Uh, basically, so, very simple. And that's the other uh, end of the. That that's the flywheel end of it. That engages the clutch plates at about 750 RPM. <coughs> that is awesome. And it's connected to the CVT with a drive shaft. Wow. As a matter of fact, I can let you look at the transmission because I rebuilt this one. Uh, this was donated to me by a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, who passed away in 2007. Uh, Active, very active club member Paul Tyrone. Um, he and I became best best friends. And when he passed away, he left this to the museum and his will. So it's just fully restored. Uh, this is the transmission, ah. double belt, open system. Very easy to work on. It picks its own gears. Basically, what you're looking at is a snowmobile transmission gotcha. with a double belt, same same pattern, same design. Huh. That is. Super interesting. Yeah. So it's uh, it's one of my treasures. Now is metal on wood or is just wood here just for um, <coughs> this aesthetics? Is, this is wood that the original factory put in to protect the, the bodywork from you know for cargo. Okay. Not that you're going to be carrying a lot of cargo in one of these things because it's only it's less than a quarter ton. So. Yeah. Um, this one here is one of the 14s left in the country. This is a Model 30, <coughs> Daffodil Deluxe. Uh, this has been an ongoing project for uh, close to 10 years. I found this car a total wreck. It took me almost four years to do the body work on it <laughs> and uh, to rebuild the engine. But yeah, I'm she, sure there's not a whole lot of uh, you know tooling left to. No. You know. <laughs> You know, I've had basically had to rebuild the heating system myself, and you know, a lot of, a lot of parts and a lot of love went into this one. Uh, the only thing I have left to do is basically I've redone the whole interior. Um, what I have to do is basically put it all together and button it up, and she's ready to go. And I've got a lot of the accessory items for this car. That is a cute front end. That that front end was actually designed for the American market. Oh yeah. Yeah, because of the everybody loves chrome in America, right? So they, True. Yeah. they went and did the chrome <laughs> bit on the front. Wow. And this one I know I've seen before, uh, and this is this is a Volvo <laughs> after Volvo took over? Yes, this is um when when Volvo took over they rebadged two of the cars that DAF produced. This is one of them. This is a Volvo 66, otherwise known as a DAF 66. Um, there's three of these in the country. I purchased this one in England back in 2012 and brought it over. Uh, it was in pretty good shape. Had a little bit of body work to do on it and gave it a spray job, but uh, 88,000 miles and still runs like a top. <laughs> now, is this the original color that would have been this on is, it? This is the original color, yep. yep. Serpentine green. Love that stripe. Racing stripes. Yeah, right, right, right. exactly. That's, that's factory too. <laughs> wow. Yep. So. And this uh, have similar. Uh... This this actually is the uh, what they call the B model. Okay. So this has the four cylinder Renault motor in it. Hmm. So and later the, later they went on to. The, you B, know. the B models actually had the Renault motor because they couldn't come up with a design fast enough in a four cylinder at the factory in order to produce these cars. So they, they went with the Renault motor, 1.1 uh, liter. Yep. And they went all the way up to a 1.4 liter. Wow. But that's the maximum that will allow the Verimatic to work with a 1.4 liter with that horsepower combination. Otherwise, the transmission blows itself apart. Hmm. Yeah. Can imagine. Yeah. So. I'm gonna open it up, dude. Yeah. Now you notice on the on the stick shift that it does have a park feature. 
Yes. Which would have made it legal to come back to the United States. By then? Which was the plan originally back in 1973. But we all know what happened in 1973, the gas crunch. Yep. And Volvo and DAF said, no, we're not going to go back. Which would have, it's a shame, because this thing is a yep, so amazing car, and it should, would have done great during the, the, grass, the gas crunch. Top end speed on this one is about 90 miles an hour. So it's more than enough to keep up with right. highway traffic. Uh, gas mileage on gas it? Gas mileage, 40, 42 miles to the gallon. Jeez. I mean, how much better can you get, right? Exactly. And no shifting. Right. Mm, so. Amazing. All right, and here we have... Here we have the 72 DAF 33 Combi, which you saw at the, at the Rutland show. Yep. Um, one of only two in the country. This is actually the club director's car. The original club director brought this car over from Holland and it's been passed on to every single club director since then and I'm the third owner Wow! since it came to the country. It's originally owned by a flower shop in Holland and it's a combi because the back seat folds down for business use and on the weekends you've got the back seat to take the kids out to the beach. I love this. <laughs> this is amazing. And again, this is the, the two cylinder because it is the Model 33. It's a, it's a Model 8 type. Now, the uh, shift here on the floor, that's your uh, forward and reverse? That's, yeah, it still has the, the forward and reverse only. Yep. Wow. Very cool. Again, that's the transmission at your feet right there out of the car. Ah. That's my little display unit. Uh, that's half of the, the rear end. All right, so on the other one, or, you know, the one that you showed me in the, the pickup, be, we got... It would be duplicated on gotcha. this side for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Well, you can see the, uh, uh, the counterweights and the bellows, which are vacuum operated. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got your vacuum connections right here that come off the motor to create the vacuum. Wow. But as she spins, the belts go in and out of the grooves to give it your speed. Huh. Very simple, very, you know... Kind of think that it took them, uh, you know, 40 years to start using it again. Right, right, exactly. Actually, Subaru, uh, I think it was the Justy back in 1982 was the, was the first car to come to this country with it. Hmm. Um, after that, it was Ford, it was General Motors, it was Datsun, it was Nissan, it was, you know, they all started coming out with it. Uh, Saturn was a was a great CVT buyer, as you know. Um, yep. It's lost a lot of interest since then, but they're still out there in the market, still being available. All right, what we got here? What military. Here is a military version of the DAF 66. Is this in a military version? Huh. They only made 1,200 of these. Uh, there's four in the country, well I should say four in North America. A uh, couple in Canada. There's a bunch, you get three, three in Canada that I know of, and there's two here in the country, in the U.S. One's on Cape Cod, painted yellow, <laughs> and this one is the original one. This was actually purchased by uh, a club member of ours from the military in Holland, and it served its entire life on the U.S. Air Force Base. Wow. As, as a military police vehicle, which is what that is. That's the, the Dutch military police. Huh. And they had something like 25 of these running around the base for security. And they retired them in 1992, and they were sold off publicly. Wow. He moved to Washington State and took it with him. And that's where I got it from. Well, it's you done a lot of work on this, or is this... This is, this is as is. Uh, I've d done a little bit of uh, touch-up paint on it. I need to replace all the decals. Uh, other than that, it's, it's full NATO spec, 24 volt. <laughs> that is awesome. 
And this is uh, the uh, uniform that, of the... That's the uniform of the military police, yep, <laughs> in Holland. <clears throat> but again, this, this doesn't have the park setting, it's just forward and reverse. Uh, it was basically used, like I said, for military police duty and for uh, convoy escorts, because it is two-wheel drive. Yeah. Hmm. Rear-wheel drive. All these are rear-wheel. Rear, rear yes, wheel exactly. That. Yep. Hmm. Butterscotch. Butterscotch, the last actual DAF produced by Volvo. It's in 1976. Um, they did not want a single belt transmission car in their lineup. So what, basically what they did is they took all the spare parts that they had left over and just continued to build the DAF until all the parts had been depleted. And this is one of the last ones. Uh, it still has the... There we go. It still has the 850cc, the last of the two cylinder motors. But it is 12 volt. Um, <coughs> this thing has been gone over with a fine tooth comb. Uh, a friend of mine in Rhode Island originally imported this car and I bought it from him for super cheap and uh, did the full restoration on it. Interior, exterior, the whole nine yards. Now, it looks like DAF only did two two door cars. They never did anything four door. Yes, and that was part of the problem. They actually never made a real family car, and that was part of their downfall. Their you know their lack of big sales, unfortunately, at my opinion anyway. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, if they had made a four door, it would have been absolutely perfect. Uh, this has an all-new interior in it. I had one of my local friends here do the interior. All the seats, all the door panels, everything. And this has still got your uh, forward and forward and reverse, no park, no nothing. Right, right. Wow. They are amazing, interesting, very cool little things. Oh, yeah. This is probably my favorite model of all time that they came out with. Um, they came out with a coupe version. Um, I spent roughly 20 years looking for this model and finally found one in California that I was able to buy. Um, this has always been my heartthrob, the, the, the coupe. And this is a 55 coupe. They also carried a 66 coupe, but it was a whole different front end, which I didn't like. It's got a very <laughs> um, Carmen Ghia look to the front. Yeah, and matter of fact, the, uh, the B-type DAFs were designed by Michelotti in Italy, who also designed the Triumph and uh, a lot of the Rolls Royces and Fiats, Lancias. Uh, so this this is basically a, an Italian design body. And and it tells you can oh, tell. Oh yeah, yeah. It has no, people mistake it for a Fiat all the time. Huh. And how many uh, in the country do you think are? Numbers of these couple uh, of the fifty-five coupe. There's probably two. Uh, there's two of the sixty-six models in in the coupe version, um, but very rare cars. Very rare. Now, where do you come across most of these? Is it, you know just from other people that it's fine, or do you find them in it's junkyards? The, or you just a club. Um, I found a couple in New Jersey junkyards. Um, they, they come out of the woodwork, believe it or not. I mean, people pop up with them all the time. Huh. Um, they know the club exists, so they, they contact me when they're trying to get rid of them or sell them or, you know, finally had enough of it. Um, and I try to connect up cars with members, you know, to try to keep them rolling on the road. Yeah. I very honestly have never, you know, saw, you know, never knew about DAF until... You know, seeing it, uh, yep. yeah, so. All right. Quiet. <laughs> this, this is Nellie. Uh, she is the last officially imported DAF from the factory, 1967, before the June 67 ban. 
Mm -hmm. uh, they only brought six of these over through Puerto Rico. <coughs> and this is only one of two left out of six that they brought in. Uh, she's all original. The uh, 850cc motor. I just had to save it just because it was one of the last. Oh, yeah. And it's not in bad shape. It's very low mileage on this car. You know, that's the original paint on there, which still has a pretty good shine to it. Wow. Didn't it's a shame. get much use. It's a shame. Uh, yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. Like I said, there's only two of those left. This is kind of an oddball, a little sparky. Um, 1973, a company called uh, Waterman Electric, Charles Waterman Electric out of Athol, Mass, decided he wanted to make some electric cars, and he chose DAF to be a base for that. He brought in 24 of these cars, uh, four of them, I believe, were station wagons, and the rest were sedans. Um, he called this model the 884. This is an all-electric DAF. He basically ripped the motor out, kept the transmission, and put in a complete electric system on it. As far as we can tell, this is the only one left out of the 24. So batteries must be in the back? Nope. Battery rack right there in the front. Oh. The other half goes in the back. Plus a 12 volt motor, or a 12 volt battery, to operate the vacuum motor for the transmission. How many volts uh, total were? 49. 49 volts. Yep. Wow. It took 16 6 volt batteries and one 12 volt. Oh. Huh. This, this is a an actual original Vermont vehicle, believe it or not, bought from Waterman. Um, it was used as a mail truck in, in Woodstock for about seven years. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it doesn't look it. No. This, this, this is the original body, as is. It was not restored. There's no rest on it. Uh, so he must have taken really good care of it. Exceptional care of it. Yep. Wow. Sweet. And last but not least, we've got... Last but not least, we have Maryland. Maryland is a 1978 Volvo 343, which was originally designed as the DAF 77, which never saw production. Uh, basically, they took the DAF design and, and slapped the Volvo label on it. So these are all DAF parts. with just a Volvo late tag on it. Huh. And this is only one of two in the country. Uh, this originally belonged to the uh, Swedish ambassador in San Francisco. He brought it over with him when he got stationed over there, and when he retired, he put it on eBay, and I ended up with it. This is all original, less than 50,000 miles on it. It's a 78. The only thing I've done is put a coat of wax on this. Uh, that is the amazing thing. Yep. Yeah. The history behind these things is just. Now this was actually featured in a Richard Gere movie. Um, Huh. That one right there, it's featured in the uh, the Paris shooting episode. So apparently not in Paris, or did they take this car over to Paris? No, it was actually <laughs> it was actually filmed in Detroit. Uh. Uh, they they made Detroit look like Paris. Huh. So you oh. got a star here. I have a star. That's why she's called Marilyn. Yes. <laughs> oh, she is gorgeous. Wow.
I have roughly 5,000 pieces of memorabilia up here, uh, factory related, fa received from the factory, or purchased on eBay. Well, that's cool that Matchbox uh, actually made some uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. calf trucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Lion Car in Holland, which is uh, a big model uh, producer, they produce a lot of the truck models still. Um, this is kind of an interesting little factory tidbit. These are all original factory films that were issued uh, from Holland. I have the original ones here, all the various models that they were trying to promote, which I've turned into video and DVDs. Oh. Just to save them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, those things definitely don't. Uh, you know, those have a shelf life. Let's. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Let's say. Uh, DAF actually had a real good uh, Dakar Rally program, where they designed their own trucks for the Dakar Rally. Seriously, so, they Dakar. still do that, or still is it? do it? Yep. Huh. Still do it. Except now it's being held in, in South America, which is kind of defeats the purpose. Of those yeah. Purpose. yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Um, yeah, all the various keychains with the DAF logos on them. Um, basically, everything from here up is factory. Everything here is accessory or truck items. Back when the, they would give you keychains mm -hmm. and stuff when you bought a car. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yep. Patches. Yep. This is just from people that work there, or is this from... Actually, this row here I got from the factory. Uh, okay. when, last time I made the visit, back in 1970, uh, we got a lot of our stuff from there. Hmm. And these are all the various logos that they've used over the years. Uh, and you have your 600, your 750 model, and your daffodils, and the very Matic logo. And the steering wheel knobs. More variomatic. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, some more of the uh, the newer version, 33s, 44, 55, 46, 66. And then and after then, Volvo take over. Then the Volvo take over. Yep. Which they actually had quite a few of the model 300 series that they produced up until 1991. Huh. No, it's still based on DAF, or they just... So the body's still based on DAF, yep. yep. They uh, basically used the same motors, but they went with a four-speed transmission that they had to design because it was costing too much to put the CVT in. If you can see that in the tie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Promotional uh, literature. Yep, promotional handouts, flyers, whatnot. And then you have your military truck versions. Actually, the DAP has been kind of toying with military stuff since the uh, early 20s. And they came out with what they call a Trado transmission or a, a frame, which is a double axle drive. Hmm. Wow. Very, very flexible on all terrain. I can imagine that would probably be a lot easier and safer than trying to, you know, run a drive shaft mm -hmm. down the underside. And exactly. Catching on something. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I'm assuming that's a DAF trailer? That is a DAF trailer, <laughs> yes. Whoa. Talk about some articulation. Mm hmm. Exactly, right? <laughs> that's the tank they actually produced before World War II that was uh, confiscated by the Nazis when they invaded. Mm -hmm. And they, they used every M39 they could possibly get their hands on because it was a great scout car. Yeah. 
<coughs> so it's during um, you know World War Two was the the factory damaged too it, bad. It was or? not uh, strange as it may seem. It was not um, the Phillips. Light bulb factory, electronics factory, actually was bombed pretty good, but the DAF factory just down the street was never touched. And you'd think, being a motorized, you know, vehicle that uh, the Allies would want to take, yeah, you know, exactly that out first. But these cool stick pans. Yeah, all factory issue. Now we've got a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff here. Uh, this is all stuff from the DAF Club in England. Um, I go down to, every three or four years, I go down to their event, which is run in August. Um, beautiful uh, porcelain. Oh yeah, this is all factory original. Uh, this is from the executive dining room. <laughs> This is from the regular dining room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely see the uh, the difference in the. Uh... Yep, and then this is one of the giveaways that the factory issued to uh, employees during the '64-'65 oh, yeah, yeah. Christmas season. Huh. Little cordial glasses. Those must I, be I extremely rare. They are very very rare. Yep. Now these uh, tiles here just uh, or my, my mother made, actually made this table, so <laughs> they're uh, what they call a delft blue tile. Yep. Beautiful stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, we've got a lot of um, factory giveaways and factory collectibles in here. Um, this glass here, my grandfather actually received from the dealer when he bought his bought a DAF. So that's that's a treasured piece. This set here was given to factory employees in the '62 '63 Christmas event. Again, very rare. Back when uh, all they, the companies actually yeah, cared about their employees. Little glasses it's, with the daffodil on it. Uh, I have a whole set of those. What do we have down here? We have a dashboard for a DAF 600. Huh. Big dashboard, huh? Yes! <laughs> Amazing! Now, at one point, um, DAF purchased Leyland in England. So they were tied together. Um, so they issued Leyland DAF wine decanters and wine glasses. And then they turned around and sold Leyland off. Now, DAF and Leyland are owned by Packard, which produces Freightliner and Peterbilt trucks here in the U.S. Yep. yep. So they're again they're under one umbrella. <laughs> more things change, and more they stay the same. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Yep. I have a lot of books on on DAFs. Um, factory actually issued their own magazines, which is kind of neat. Four times a year, they would issue uh, magazines for DAF owners. Wow. Again, back when companies cared about their, uh, you know, what they were doing. Exactly, yep. And I have every issue of that, so that's a complete library. <coughs> That was Damn the homecoming uh, or something. That was the the funeral of the engineer that originally designed the CVT. Okay. That was his um, his funeral procession, and they actually manufactured a, uh, a special. Uh, an artist had manufactured a special coach for. I don't know if it was that for that purpose or not, but right. they used that in his um, funeral procession. Wow. So this is like every model that they uh, the have made? Every model, yep. Uh, 
And you have a fair amount of these here. Is there I anything have, that you don't have? Uh, the only thing I don't have is a Model 32. Other than that, I have them all. Wow. Yeah. yeah. This is basically everything from DAF USA, everything from here over. Uh, we even sponsored a, a show in Manchester back in 2007. Well, believe it or not, we had four DAF show up for it, which is kind of <laughs> awesome. <coughs> yeah, this is the, some of the original dealer uh, folders that they issued. Um, magazine ads. Um, newspaper articles. This is one of the original DAF dealership signs, illuminated signs. And I was so lucky to find that. Yeah, definitely. Couldn't find the frame, but I found the sign. <laughs> Those are new newspaper stampings that they use to run newspaper ads from. They're reverse wow. uh, imprints. <laughs> How I got them, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no clue. <Yeah. laughs> well, that one person that happened to have them that uh, knew that you uh, probably needed them. Yep, yep. Yeah, these are all various stickers and club logos from around the world. And the various clubs, organizations. And Zaf, again, still is involved in a lot of uh, international rally circuits. And to this day, they're, they're still in competition. Did race cars too. They designed their own race cars. You can see that the transmission is actually four times the normal size of one. Uh, um, and was, it handled the extra power. Uh, yeah, exactly. Engine was they used out. the Cros Crosworth uh, Ford motor in there. Uh, so they had to design the very a lot bigger. Um, it was actually in a Formula 3 category, which doesn't even exist anymore. So this, co this company did a little bit of everything. Everything. Yep. <coughs> and then wow. this is my library of every factory service and parts manual for every model that they ever made. I have a complete set, including catalogs of the special tooling that they use. Now, I bet you nowadays with the advent of the 3D printing and stuff, you know, parts might have a, a you know be easier to you know find or make well, have you ever even thought about that yeah a friend of mine in Holland actually does reproduce a lot of the parts um, so he's you know he's helping us out a lot I'm yeah. helping him out by buying from him because I'm not about to manufacture a piece of rubber that only go, fits you know five or six cars here in this country exactly yeah cost, he, cost he's prohibitive doing it. he's doing it so Parts are becoming more and more available. Now, worldwide, how many cars? There's roughly 4,000 in Holland alone. There's a club in Italy, there's a club in France, there's a club in Germany. So, it, the numbers in Europe are, are really good. Yeah. Mm. Here in the States, it's still small. <laughs> and we got more minis. Oh, lion toys, this is what you're talking about earlier. Right, right, exactly. Gotcha. Yep. Unbelievable. And every time I turn around, somebody else has got something else coming out, so I have to have it. <laughs> it's like a disease. <laughs> when you're a car guy, yeah, yeah. it definitely, uh -huh. uh, definitely is. Yep. I actually started collecting when I was four years old, so you can imagine I'm 64 now, so 60 years of collecting. A lot of stuff up here. Yeah. And, and this has been your, your one passion is DAF. And car wise, yes. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, like I said, my grandfather got me hooked on it. 
and uh, I've been doing it ever since. This is the, the largest collection of DAFs outside of Europe, private or public. Mm, excuse me. Bless you. Thank you. Gosh, I knew another one was coming. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, thank you again. Kip, it's thank just you. amazing to uh, be able to come out and uh, you know take a look at all this and, and get your knowledge because uh, that's one of the main things I want to do with this uh, this channel is make sure history keeps going. People yep. don't forget about definitely a little car company called DAF. Thank you guys for uh, all of you that actually made it through the entire. Uh, 40 plus minutes of, of this, but uh, I just couldn't seem to find a nice spot to be able to kind of cut it down, so I didn't. I um, hope you all learned a little bit more about DAF and uh, their importance to today's uh, car world. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to give this video a like and uh, share it with your friends and uh, family who might enjoy it as well. Um, if you are subscribing, make sure you also hit that notification button so that you are aware when new videos come out. And finally, please be sure to also follow all of our social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, we always have some stuff on Facebook and Instagram that you will not uh, see here on the YouTube channel. Have a day. Hopefully it's a good one.